this board operates, so bear with me. This is a public hearing, and we are the Zoning Board of Adjustment for Putnam County, Florida. We operate under the authority of, of Articles 11 and 12 of the Land Development Code as amended. The primary responsibility of the board is to hear and decide appeals challenging final determinations made by the Planning and Development Services Department under the Land Development Code and to hear and act upon requests for variances, special use permits, non-conforming use determinations, and preliminary development plans under the Land Development Code. A variance is a relaxation of the requirements of the zoning code in the particular case where, because of uncir unusual circumstances, a little enforcement of our zoning code would result in undue or unnecessary hardship. The zoning code permits us to authorize variances only for height, size of structure, size of yards, and open spaces. <coughs> if we grant a variance, we may impose reasonable conditions on the use of the property, which must be satisfied if the variance is to remain valid. The standards we use in determining whether or not to grant a variance are listed in section 45-833 of the Land Development Code. A special use permit is special permission to use property in a fashion which the zoning classification of the property does not automatically permit. If we grant a special use permit, we may impose reasonable conditions on the use of the property which must be satisfied if the special use permit is to remain valid. Unlike a change in the zoning classification, as a general rule, a special use permit applies only to the specific use requested in the application for a special use permit. The standards we use in deciding whether or not to grant a special use permit are listed in section 45-1083 of the Land Development Code. Procedurally, we will call this case by name and number. A member of the staff will then briefly explain to us the nature of each request we will then take any comments from the applicant or their representative, followed by any public comments concerning the request. Please direct all comments and statements to the board and not to other people in the audience. Before speaking, we will ask each person to be recognized, come forward to the lectern, and identify his or herself by name and address. After all persons wishing to speak have been heard, we will entertain a motion from the board. This motion will be voted on by the board members and become our final order. Any decision made by this board can be appealed to the circuit court. However, any appeal must be filed within 30 days after the Board of Adjustments has rendered the final order which is being appealed. Are there any questions? Okay, before the first case is heard today, all of those wishing to speak need to be sworn in. So will the notary please administer the oath. So there's no one willing to speak today. Okay. Uh, before we hear the first coast, coast case, really, is a special use permit 23-000001. And the reason I'm asking that right now is that we need to do an ex parte vote call. So if anybody has spoken with any of the applicants or anyone else about this application, this needs to be stated now. No. 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 Okay, Ms. Brown, are you ready? Okay, for the record, Nancy Brown, Planning and Development Services, I'm going to present to you today, as uh, the chairwoman noted, special use permit number 23, SUP 230001. It is to allow a second boat house as provided in the land development code under section 45-110 print 2 i the applicants are ronald c and cynthia f ward the location of the property is 122 palm trail east palatka parcel number 40-09-27-0 dash zero 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 dash zero nine eight zero it's approximately 0.41 acres located on the north side of palm trail in the palm port subdivision a little bit of background on the parcel there is an existing 
boathouse. It's about 408 square feet. You'll see in your staff report there was a survey, and I'll get into that, what the survey showed, and it's about 408 square feet existing. And extends over the canal adjacent to the property about 12 feet. On that survey, it shows that the the boathouse is a wooden deck. And as stated in the staff, staff report, when the wards purchased the property, it was covered. The boat slip was actually covered. They just removed the cover. Everything else pertaining to a boat slip was there. So it was on the roll since 2000 as a boat lift or boat boathouse. We're going to continue to call it a boathouse. The proposed boathouse is 448 square feet or 16 by 28, and it's going to be located if approved on the um, west of the existing boathouse or east of the existing boathouse. Um, aerial map, it might be a little bit hard to see. The light blue area does indicate the parcels. And if you made your site visit, you know that on that second parcel adjacent to the ward's residence is now a garage. It wasn't in the aerial. The aerial is about two years old. The boundary survey I was taught earlier it does show the um, what is called the covered wood deck. It is a boathouse. And the proposed location as well as the where the garage is located on the property. Zoning map of the area. Uh, it did not really come out to show where the location of the map, the, the parcels are, but it's the same as the previous overhead. Future land use. I'm going to go into the criteria real quick on the special use permit. I'm going to show you some pictures real quick. Well, if I can get it there. This is the existing boathouse. Next slide I'm going to show you is where the proposed boathouse will be approximately on along the uh, bulkhead in front of the garage. And these were also in your packet, so you should be able to see them on the screen as well. Supplemental use criteria. Um, we're going to go through 10 real quick criteria that the zoning board needs to evaluate to determine the finding of um, approval or not on the second boathouse. A rural residential land use does allow for single family dwellings in a boathouse such as this and the uh, proposed is a principal uh, is an accessory to the principal use. This just sh shows you where we got it from the land development code section 45109 table of accessory uses and structures. Section 45110, print 10, number I. There shall only be one boathouse per lot or parcel unless special use permit uh, is approved by the Board of Adjustment. And staff's analysis is that it is uh, allowed with a special use permit. Special use permit would not adversely or unduly restrict the enjoyment permitted use in the surrounding area. Uh, staff said analysis was that the uh, single family dwelling and the common accessory use would be a boathouse uh, and allowed also on the property would be an additional boathouse with the special use permit. Uh, the special use will not substantially diminish or, or impair property rights in the area. There's been no evidence to indicate so that it would. Um, number five, adequate access and roads were provided at the time the subdivision was created back in 1970 or 1971. However, the zoning wasn't in place until 1975, um, so the parcels are a little bit smaller than what is typical. Adequate measures have been taken to provide ingress and egress. Same reason, um, um, Cheryl's class uh, one paved road and it has a cul-de-sac terminus at the end. No screening or buffering is required for boathouse. 
Number eight, special use will not have any signs or lighting that doesn't want to um, comply with the land development code. Signs are not something that we're looking at in a boathouse, but um, lighting, if lighting's there, that they would have to apply for and receive the proper permit for the lighting on that. Hazardous materials, liken it to a, uh, a carport, another um, home or another uh, vehicle on a carport. Um, let's see where we are here. Supplemental regulations. There are supplemental regulations for boathouse. Um, this boathouse is going to be adjacent or um, right at the bulkhead, so there's no dock that they would have to worry about on that. Um, there's a maximum square footage, 600 square feet on any boathouse. Both of these boathouses will be less than 600 square feet. However, together they are over, they are over that limit. Conclusion and recommendation. It is the staff's recommendation that uh, the board approve the social use permit. And uh, with the following conditions, the applicant will be required to meet all conditions stated in the land development code and any conditions added by the board. Number two, the maximum number of boat houses shall be limited to two. And number three, all construction will comply with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection and or the Corps of Engineers. And it is the applicant's responsibility to apply and receive those permits that are not in the jurisdiction of Fulton County. Any questions? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, you, you said that the uh, boathouse, is it going to run parallel to the, the boathouse? Is it going to run parallel to the bulkhead? That is the intent. Okay. Parallel. Parallel. So it's not going to extend out into the canal. Okay. Any other questions from board? Mr. Fisher? The canal, the canal, I don't know the width of the canal, but it's it's pretty good size. And if you did walk around the property and site visit, you'll see that there are boat houses across the way. And I mean, it doesn't, it, in my opinion, it would not impede the navigation of that canal. Well, I visited the site, but I have a hard time walking onto somebody's property without permission. So I didn't walk around the house, but I did see other boat, I mean, boat houses and then docks on the other side, just between the houses. But, and they also made mention of the new garage that's been added. Mm -hmm. So was that area part of the original um, boathouse? Was the garage area part of the original the boathouse? No, path. it is, uh, the original boathouse is behind the actual home. Oh, okay. Which if you're facing the two part, it's one parcel, but two lots. Oh, okay. And if you're facing the house, it's behind the house. Okay. And I did meet with the wards. We walked the property and um, he provided the pictures that you see that this proposed location as well as the existing boathouse. Okay, so the proposed boathouse then is going to be behind the garage? Correct. Okay. And I will add that if that lot that Mr. and Mrs. Ward um, was another dwelling, they would be allowed to have a boathouse. Boat dock there. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. That clears up. Thank you. Any other questions from staff? The staff and or. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Before we proceed, let's do a site visit roll call. Yes. 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 Okay, if there are no other questions and the owners um, chose not to come forward and speak, I'm going to ask if there's anyone wishing to come forward and speak in favor of the application. Anyone wishing to come forward and speak in opposition? Since there's no one in the audience to come forward or speak in for or against, I guess we'll close it <laughs> to the public and open it up for board discussion and motion. Madam Chair, I move we, I move we approve special use permit number two two dot zero 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 one 
as request does meet your criteria for a special use permit as required by section 45-1083 of the Putnam County Land Development Code, which be three recommendations, three conditions recommended by staff, and authorize the chair to sign the final order. Second. Right, we have a motion and second to approve special use permit 23-00001. Is there any further discussion? If not, all of those in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Motion carries 6 0. Um, good luck in your endeavor. Uh, but there's also a 30 day appeal process. So if there's any issues or concerns, <coughs> please work closely with staff. Thank you. Okay. All right. The next case is variance 23 0 0 2. Uh, before we hear it from uh, the planner, I would like to also do a ex parte communication vote. No. 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 Okay. Mr. Zach. Just remind yourself of what we've been told. Speak into the mic. Because <laughs> it is very difficult to hear up here. Good afternoon, board members. For the record, Zachary Baker, Planning and Development Services. This is a variance request, case number VAR 23-000002. The applicant is Scott Johnson. The location of the variance is 114 St. John's Court, Satsuma. The parcel is approximately 0.2 acres. The zoning designation is Residential 2, R2. The future land use is Rural Residential, RR. The request is to place an accessory structure on a vacant lot across the street from the primary residence as allowed by Land Development Code Section 45-104B. Parcel background. The subject parcel comprises lots 342 and 343 of the Hermit's Cove unrecorded subdivision. The lots were originally recorded on April 3rd, 1989. The Hermit's Cove subdivision was administratively vested for development on October 28, 1997. The applicant owns a home at 117 St. John's Court, Satsuma. The applicant acquired three lots in 2003, the lot containing the home and two lots across the street. The, op the applicant recorded a unity of title for the two lots across the street from the primary residence, combining them in perpetuity, which allows the applicant to build across pre-existing lot lines. According to the applicant, supplied variance application. They intend on placing a 30 foot by 50 foot metal garage on the property with a 25 foot by 28 foot concrete driveway to access the building. The impervious surface ratio for the proposed development equals 25.3%. The ISR for that zoning district is 35%. Here you can see an aerial of the properties in question. The purple outline is where the applicant lives, his single family residence. The orange outline is the vacant lot across the street. It's worth noting that they share approximately 25 to 30 foot of frontage of the road. So it's not immediately across the street, but the property lines do uh, intersect. Here you have the zoning map. Uh, again, purple is the house, orange is the vacant lot. Zoning is residential too. Future land use for res rural residential. Special flood hazard uh, FEMA flood zone map. There is a little bit of flood zone AE. According to the GIS, uh, the, the proposed building will be right outside of that AE. Um, if it's determined during his building permit review process that he's in the flood zone, he will have to elevate. And here you have a wetland map as well. Uh, no wetlands on the parcel that he intends to develop with the accessory structure. 
Staff finds the requested variance meets the criteria required for issuance of a variance in LDC section 45-833 and recommends approval of the requested variance to allow an accessory structure on the lot separated by a street from the principal use, subject to the following conditions. One, all required permits pertaining to the construction of an accessory structure shall be obtained prior to the start of construction. The exterior of the proposed building shall be compatible with the existing residential character of the neighborhood. Metal siding shall be either painted or colored in a manner that matches or complements the applicant's single family residence at 117 St. John's Court. Number three, to mitigate the aesthetic impact of the proposed structure to the surrounding neighborhood, Prior to the final inspection of the structure, the applicant shall install shrubbery at a minimum of 18 inches in height, planted three feet on center, along the St. John's Court right-of-way and along adjoining property lines within view of proposed, within view of the proposed building. I'll take any questions if you have them. Do we have any questions for staff? I have a question um, it, on number three as far as planting the shrubbery um, in the whole entire neighborhood and there's several lots that have other things stored and I don't see any requirement for having to plant the shrubbery but since there's a metal building going up I was just curious about that so the the shrubbery is a condition that we've imposed on recent uh, variances for this. You may have recalled one uh, we did in January of 2022, but the case was from 2021. Um, and just to you know ensure continuity on how we're processing these and setting precedents, okay. we applied it the same condition to this gentleman. Uh, I can't speak for the other lots that have vehicles and trailers stored. I understand, but stored. I was just you know thinking that unless this is you know in the in the rules regulations that's fine i have no problem with just asking questions okay any more questions for staff okay let's have a site visit roll call please yes 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 Okay, I think uh, whenever the notary uh, did the um, uh, people to speak, the uh, applicant chose not to, so he is the only person in the audience right now, so uh, uh, nobody else, I guess, will be coming to speak in favor or against this application. So at this time, do um, you have any questions? If not, I guess we'll close it to the public and open it up for board discussion and motion. Madam Chairman, I move we approve variance 23-000002 as it meets the requirement for a variance as required by section 45-833 of the Putnam County Land Development Code with the three conditions recommended by staff and authorize the chair to sign the final order. Second. Right, we have a motion and second to approve variance 23-000002. Zero, 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 two. Is there any further discussion? If not, all of those in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. One, two, three, four, five. Motion carries 6-0. Mr. Johnson, if you have any issues or questions, please work closely with staff. And there is a 30-day appeal process. So good luck in your endeavor. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have any old business? Any new business? Okay, the next thing we need to do is uh, approve the minutes for February the 15th, 2023. Has everybody had a chance to read them? Just go. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Second. All right, motion uh, to approve. First and second motion uh, um, for the minutes for February the 15th, 2023. All of those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 6-0. Okay, I guess this is all we have today. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh, we stand adjourned. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>